Oh, I'm seeing that I'm muted. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Let me start again then. <laughs> um, so my name is Mercedes, but everybody calls me Mechi. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And um, as I was saying before, I am, sorry, I'm repeating myself. This, these things happen when I'm live. I gotta remember. Uh, so, I have been working here at Darcy for five years now. I'm currently working as employer brand manager, focusing on project management, diversity, and community building. And I have a lot of hobbies, but the main ones that side are music and gaming. And I'm going to invite also Bea to introduce herself. She's here with us. Um, so, Bea, can you jump in for a few seconds to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks Michi. I was having a few technical issues here with my camera, sorry guys. So, um, as Michi said, my name is Beatriz, but everyone here calls me Bea. I've been working here at Bytes Dev ever since like um, November 2021, if I'm not mistaken, which makes a year and a half. Sorry, not sort good of. at math here. <laughs> uh, well, I've been working uh, with Michi ever since I started uh, here. And it's been a great journey here at Bias Dev. I learned a lot here and met a lot of great people. Um, but I mean, I'm going to leave you to Mechi and I'll be back in the future. <laughs> Thank you, Bea. And as you can see, Bea's from Brazil. I'm from Argentina. And from what I've been seeing on the chat, there's people from a lot of different countries in Latin America and a lot of different cities. So please, if you can, drop a comment. Let us know where you are watching from. <laughs> Let's see. 
we usually have people from maybe Colombia, from Venezuela, Uruguay. Can you hear me now? Because I'm still seeing a few comments saying I'm not listening. To <laughs> but I think it's working. <laughs> um, OK, so moving forward, what are we going to be talking about tonight? We're going to start today's webinar by talking a little bit about our company, who we are, and what we do. Oh, I'm just seeing the comments. Colombia, Mexico, Ecuador, great. I know there's a bit of delay. This always happens. <laughs> Puerto Alegre, Brazil, Guatemala. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just exploded. Bolivia, Panama, New Mexico. <laughs> this is exciting. Santa Fe, Argentina, beautiful province. I love it. Oh, Spain. <laughs> we have someone from Europe watching as well. It's pretty late there. Um, Okay, so as I was saying, we're going to be talking a little bit about us, about the company, who we are, and what we do. After that, Bea's going to jump in to explain and talk a bit about our hiring process. And at the end, we're going to have a questions and answers sessions. So feel free to send us questions during the presentation through the chat. I'm going to try to answer most of them by the end of this webinar. And talking about us, Barisdev is a young, dynamic, and flexible company. We were founded back in 2009 by Paula Serin and Ato de Marco, both Argentinians, but now living in other countries, taking this company <laughs> beyond our borders. And ever since the day we started, we worked very hard to become a remote first company. We've been remote since the day we opened our virtual doors. <laughs> um, and we offer an exciting environment where high performing tech professionals can display their talents and share their knowledge. We, as a company, specialize in solid end-to-end -end delivery of highly customized technology solutions designed by the top 1% IT talent, always ready to drive meaningful change with a strategic vision for the future. Basically, we are the, or we want to be, <laughs> the choice workplace for outstanding individuals that want to engage in a global community through high-level challenges and using the most modern technologies. We currently have over 4,000 bidders working with us from over 40 countries and providing services to empower 14, 500 companies and leading brands across the globe. What we want as a company basically is to become business partners with our clients and help them achieve their business goals with cross industry experience and technological excellence. Well, also, and this is most important, while also being recognized and trusted for employing the most talented professionals in the IT market. Basically, VirusDev runs on talent, and our team evaluates over a million applicants every year to be able to find and train the most talented professionals in Latin America and be able to connect them with our clients and companies who trust us in mostly the United States. Since the day we started our operations, hiring the top 1% of tech talent has fueled our business and culture. That's why we created a rigorous selection process that helped us recruit only the most experienced professionals. And Bea is going to explain a little bit more about how we do that when she jumps in in a few minutes. So with this goal of harnessing the top 1% IT talent, we knew that it would never be possible to concentrate all that talent in a single city or even a single country, right? That being said, the remote work environment was the only way to break all these geographical barriers. And that's why we currently have our team distributed in over 600 different cities from over 40 countries. All our teams are 100% remote. Right. Our jobs are really remote and we have people working while traveling, living the digital nomad lifestyle to the fullest while working here. We really have teams made up of people from all <laughs> different countries in Latin America. I think I never even share a team with our, someone from my own city, except when I first started and we were only 500 employees in the company. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as a global village of overachieving professionals empowered by real connections. And we have a native digital work environment, which was what I was saying. We were founded as a remote first company since day one. And we have flexibility and trust, which enables the digital lifestyle for all our endeavors. 
as I said before as well, each year over 1 million software developers and tech professionals apply to Virusapp. What's the result of that? We are able to find the most talented and experienced people available on demand to deliver the end-to-end -end technology solutions for both the startups that we work with, but also the Fortune 500 companies that trust us. We have worked with more than 700 companies so far, some of them being like Google, Rolls-Royce, Pinterest, eBay, Motorola, but also some of the most innovative startups in Silicon Valley. Regarding technologies, although we work with almost any profile, we focus mainly on modern web development technologies, mobile and big data. And we have opportunities for roles not only in development, but also in architecture, leadership, and management. And also for the non-technical profiles, we also have plenty of, of opportunities as well in areas such as marketing, HR, sales, business development, etc. Okay, so that was an overview of what we do and what we are focusing on. And now I'm going to invite Bea to join us again so she can share some insights on our hiring process. So, and I'll be seeing you all back soon in the Q&A session. So hi, Bea, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Mechi. So, hey again, everyone. Um, well, as Mechi has mentioned, uh, we have a lot of openings here at Vitasdev, uh, and they're a great opportunity to join the global workforce uh, with international grade salaries, and also, as she mentioned, the flexibility of being fully remote. Um, so, if you want to join Vitasdev and become a Bdever, stay tuned. In the next few minutes before our Q&A session, again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We're going to answer them at the end of this webinar. But uh, right now, I'm going to be giving you a lot of tips regarding our hiring process. Um, I'll be covering the basics like the application, the online tests, the interview, and also the last steps uh, after you've been approved through all of our applicant journey. Uh, first thing is, have you uh, already applied to a position with us? If so, let us know in the comments which step of the process uh, you are now. I want to see some people here and check. Again, the delay. We are live, so that's expected. But I see some people doing the tasks. OK. And some people that also said they performed their interviews. Great. Oh, amazing. Well, I'm going to be giving tips throughout the whole process. So um, let's start here with the openings, oh, with the job application, sorry. Uh, here at Vitasdev, you can apply to as many positions as you'd like. So if you're interested in 10 positions, go ahead, apply for them all. Uh, but it's good that you have clear goals for your career. And I only say that because, um, I mean, we don't want you to end up on a process for a position you're not really interested in. Um, so it's good to perform some research on the area the company, the role you're applying for. Um, and as I just said, we have openings, a lot of openings for many different profiles here. So I'm sure you'll find something you're passionate about. OK, um, besides that, it's essential to have your resume and LinkedIn profile updated. With all that, you can go to our applicant site and all you got to do is add your information there and apply again to as many positions as you'd like. Uh, but if I had to go further on this step and give a few more tips, I would say that uh, when setting your profile, be transparent about your skill set, your experiences, your abilities, and also uh, your career and salary expectations. Uh, oh, another thing that's really important, uh, don't forget to always keep it up to date. So whenever uh, you're free, go there, check if it's updated, uh, especially your contact details, because that way we can reach out to you. But let's say you did your applications, completed your profile on the applicant side. What now? Well, uh, now you have a few online tests to complete there. Uh, people often ask us if the tests are mandatory, and the short answer is yes. But don't worry, I know uh, it's a lot of tests to do all at once. You don't need to take them all at the same day. Uh, but completing all the pending tests is the only way to make sure we can move forward with your process, okay? So it's really important uh, to go through this process, this part of the process. Um, and for this part, again, a few more tips. Make sure you have the appropriate hardware. Uh, a computer might be needed to perform some of the tests. 
uh, check if you have a stable connection. Um, one thing that I always like to do when I'm doing online tests like that is I have pen and paper by my side just in case I need it. Um, another key factor here, choose a good, calm, silent place where no one will interrupt you because uh, that way you can focus completely on the tests and then get the best results possible. And along with the tests, I'd like to highlight something here, uh, what we call the self-driven process, which is kind of an asynchronous interview in which the candidate will record some videos. Um, that way we make sure that we have access to top talent, regardless of their calendar availability for a recruiting interview. So I would recommend you to go through this step too. Okay. Let's say, um, you went through all this, uh, th those tests. So we'll be looking for the best matches for you. And as soon as we find an opportunity, we're scheduling an interview. Again, sometimes this is done with a recruiter, and in some cases, candidates have a very busy schedule, and the coordination of a recruiting interview is a roadblock, and it can delay the application process. So we have the asynchronous interview too, so keep an eye on that. But uh, the interview, I know it's the part where most people get anxious about. I understand it. I've been through interviews. I had my interviews before joining here too. But you don't need to worry because um, Sometimes we think that the interview is about being judged or tested. And it's not that we want to judge or test you. We want uh, to get to know you better and improve the chances of matching you with the perfect opening. Um, also, I'm going to give a few tips on how to prepare for the interviews so you can ace this thing, okay? Well, again, I, I might sound a little repetitive here, but research is everything. Do a little bit more research before the interview. Either if it's a recruiting interview, a technical interview, a client interview, um, and also for clients, keep in mind that uh, it can be either external clients or internal clients, which means our own teams. But either way, you should look up for information about the roles, the projects, the industry, everything. Um, and for example, if you're applying, let's say, for a talent acquisition role, not only read carefully the job description, but try to understand what's expected from that specific talent acquisition role in the tech industry. Uh, so a little research can help on that. And the more info you get, the more likely you are to apply for a position that meets your expectations. Uh, the process will go faster, probably, because you won't be uh, spending time on applications and tests uh, that you don't really want to. And the more prepared you'll be for the interview. Um, while doing the research, it's very important to try to understand the company and the opening, as I mentioned, but uh, the company too, because we want you like we want you to imagine if you can see yourself working in that space and not only performing those tasks, but relating to our company's culture. We call it a cultural fit. It's something really important to identify if the values and objectives of the place you want to work are aligned to your to your own. Um, and besides that, you should also review your experiences, your skills, see how those can relate with the job description. Sometimes you don't have 100% of the requirements for a job, but you can find something that relates to that and also fulfill that need. So even if you're efficient, like haven't officially done it before, you can imagine similar situations that might have taught you the skills to perform, you know, the task. Um, also, some people like to do a little rehearse uh, before the interview. So imagining the questions they might be asked and thinking of what would they say in this situation. Um, and again, <laughs> you should also repeat the steps of checking your hardware because, I mean, a computer, again, is the best option since you might be required to code or perform some tests related to the role during, during your technical interviews. Um, you should check if your camera, your microphone, your internet connection are working properly. And again, look for a quiet place to perform the interview and have pen and paper close to you, just in case. Better safe than sorry. Um, that being said, let's move forward to the actual interview, okay? Um, so during the interviews, which is where you put all the previous steps into practice, um, I mean, one thing here, Again, even if it's a recruiting interview, technical interview, client interview, you should keep in mind what you have learned so far during your research. Um, some people like to write a small guide, some keywords, so they don't get lost in what they will say uh, during the interviews. 
So if you have some notes from your research from before the interview, keep them next to you. But you uh, be careful too, because you don't want to sound like you're reading the speech throughout the whole interview. You know, you don't want to sound robotic. Uh, the interview is a place for both for, to, to feel comfortable, to express yourself. Again, there's no reason to be anxious. Be yourself. Think of this moment more of a chill conversation uh, where we want to know you better. Okay. Uh, it's good to take care of your personal parents, but don't worry, you don't need to be dressed formal, like wearing a tie or anything like that. Be yourself, that's fine. Uh, and of course, uh, speak in a clear tone, a slow pace, uh, try to give a good display of your knowledge and your hard skills. Um, not only your hard skills, this is something really, really important here. Uh, your soft skills are super important too. Uh, show how your attitude is like in the work environment. We really care about your thought process and how you interact with other people. Again, we are a multicultural team. We are dealing with people from all around the world. We want to see how you deal with different people and in teams. Um, and one thing that people, uh, you, it, it might sound obvious, but always read or listen to the questions you've been asked very carefully and also for uh, to the instructions you've been given. Uh, I mean, you should be attentive, but it's not a problem. Of course, if you need the recruiter to repeat something, just ask it. Everyone will understand, but be attentive just to make sure you got everything and you're giving proper answers to the questions. Okay. And finally, don't care only about answering. Ask questions too. Um, remember what I said, like results are not the only important thing. Recruiters also care about your thought process and how you are understanding and experiencing that experience of that uh, interview too. So ask things about the role, about the position, ask everything you want. If they can, they cannot get you the information right on time, I'm pretty sure they'll like lead you to someone who can, or there's an uh, awesome feature on an applicant site, which is the live chat that can also answer some of your questions, but don't feel shy. Like you can answer, uh, ask questions during interviews too. Okay. I mean, let's say you went through the interview. If you followed all those tips, you probably realize that interviews can be easier, much more of a fun part of the hiring process. And also that you can learn more about yourself and your skills and be even more prepared for further steps here. Let's say you finished your interviews and we hope that after this step, you get to become a bit ever. And if that's the case, first, congratulations. Uh, second, uh, we really want you to feel part of it. You know, we really wanted to feel like a bit ever, be part of it. So after accepting the proposal, signing the contract, everything, try to make the most out of this experience with us, you know, as soon as you start. Uh, you will receive your project or your team assignment and start the onboarding journey here. Uh, make sure you communicate clearly don't be afraid to ask questions again. We like when people ask questions and care about the process. Sometimes we can uh, even think of better solutions and better and ways to optimize the process if you're asking questions. So please feel free to do that. Again, feel free to take notes, pay attention to all the rules, the norms, the run books that we have. And last but not least, as I mentioned right at the beginning of this webinar, uh, use this opportunity to network because Bytes Dev is a great place to do that. I've met people from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different places, and this is one of the things I love most about this company. Um, and I mean, uh, if by any chances you haven't been selected for an opening, don't feel disencouraged, okay? Uh, even if your profile is not a fit for the position you applied for or you didn't move past the final steps of the hiring process, we'll be looking for other openings that might suit your profile. And that's why I said, always keep your profile updated there uh, on our applicant site, because we'll be looking for other openings for you and we'll be in touch if we find any other opportunities, okay? And until then, again, feel free to keep applying for other openings. Um, well, I think that was it. I hope it helped you understand our hiring process a little better and also made you feel excited about joining our team. Um, one thing that I like to ask, I mean, I'm pretty sure you all have some questions. I'm going to ask Mitchy to come back here so, um, we can all, uh, answer your questions.
Can you hear me? <laughs> I can jump in. <laughs> in the meanwhile, <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I, I will wait for the feedback on the chat to see if I am unmuted. At least on my side, everything is looking good. Uh, but maybe it's an issue with the streaming service. Um, apparently, it's the same issue with me. Oh, we can hear Mercedes. OK. Um, <laughs> OK, so everyone is saying they can hear me. Bea is about to come back. She's refreshing everything. We don't know what happened. When we're doing live events, these issues are a thing. Uh, so let's see if you can, can hear you her hear now. now. Let's see. Let's wait for the little bit of the delay. Because sometimes these things do happen. Oh, they say yeah. yes. Oh, amazing. I mean, I don't know how much you missed from my um, from my speech here, but I want to add again, like I'm going to repeat a few things regarding that link that's on um, your screen right now and also on the description of the event. Um, this link takes you to the jobs portal where you can see all of our openings so you can apply for those and also to the applicant site where you can update your profile um, take your online tests, check the status of your application. Uh, also, we have uh, this feature there, the live chat support, where you can go and ask questions regarding the application. If you have any questions regarding the tests, the status of the application, everything, go there and ask us. We'll be there to help you, okay? And again, I hope you can hear me this time. One thing that is really important for us here is that this uh, QR code and the link on the description also redirects you to the survey. Uh, regarding this webinar. So please uh, participate on that survey. Your opinion is super important for us. We really need uh, to hear your insights to come up with better initiatives, better events, better webinars in the future here. But I think that's all I needed to say for this part. So let's go through the Let's the jump questions. to the Q&A. <laughs> yeah, let's go it. Okay, um, so if I have any questions. I have a few questions. I've been reading the chat on both YouTube and LinkedIn while we were doing this webinar. Um, and I have the first question from someone that says, uh, I created a user and tried to apply to a product owner in either health or the pharma industry. I'm a pharmacist and a computer engineer. Congratulations. <laughs> and I tried to record, but I had some issues with the portal. So this could happen, right? webs have glitches sometimes the connectivity is not as good internet connection is unstable so if you have the prompt to do your self-driven process and record the videos that we request to move forward in the hiring process and by any reason it glitches or it decides that it already been recorded but it hasn't or something like that in the link that you can find on the description of both these videos or in the same applicant site, you can find our live chat support. It's a bubble in there. You will be talking not with a bot. You're going to be talking directly with one of our bedevers that will be guiding you through the solving of that issue by either resetting the option to record again if it's needed or by checking if it was actually recorded properly and you don't have to do it again. That live chat is on every day so you'll be able to solve any technical issue that you might have with our applicant side directly there i hope great. i answered your question <laughs> that was great <laughs> i have a question here uh that it's also really interesting um carla as does on linkedin if there's any age limit on the positions or any preferences mm -hmm. and i must say that we truly believe that talent does not discriminate we are compromised with hiring the best talent all over the world. And it doesn't matter like age, gender, race, ethnicity, anything. We just uh, want you to show your talent here and be part of the company. OK, so don't worry about it. Apply. There's no age limit for any of our positions. Great. I have a question here that says, how long can the profile be active or matching? And actually, this is something that I think is great about our hiring process. And it is that it's an always on hiring process. Bea said something about it, but I'm going to explain a little bit more how 
what that means, right? Always on means that your profile is never fully 100% rejected, right? Because we have a lot of ongoing openings for a lot of different positions, sometimes that share the same role, right? And a same person could be a match for two, four, or even six positions with us. So what are we doing always is we're moving forward with the one that matches both the profile and also the preference of our applicant in the first place. But if for some reason that opening gets filled or the profile turns out not to be a perfect match, we're going to keep trying to fit that person into the other roles. And even if it's not a fit for those, I don't know, six openings that we might have right now, we're opening new searches and we're trying to get more people constantly. So whenever we have an opening that starts again, maybe a month after you did your hiring process, four months, six months, we're going to go back to our database, going to find all those profiles that actually fit what we're looking for, and we're going to reach out and start the process again. We're going to skip the first, first steps because you already did a process with us. I'm going to start from where we left off. And this is something that's great. We've had people that joined our company after even a year after they applied. Maybe they applied, they did a few interviews, and they didn't move forward, they were not really a match. And a year after we decided to create a new team with a different scope, something new, and the person matched the profile that we were looking for and they got hired. So there is no limit for how much time the app profile or your profile could be active. It's a forever, always on profile. Great. Uh, I have another question here. Um, that is as someone's asking if it's just one interview or several interviews throughout the process. And I, I hate saying this, but it depends. It depends on the opening and, and the project and everything, because sometimes you go through one technical interview or one interview with the recruiting manager and you can be hired. And sometimes you need to go through like a, an extra interview or some other uh, further assessments for the, for the opening. But uh, I mean, the applicant side is your place to go to check the status and the next steps for the for the process okay and again uh as soon as you join the applicant side it's going to see your status for the position so if you apply to the positions you're going to see everything there but the live chat button is also on the top bottom uh, right, uh, top, uh bottom right corner i'm sorry guys uh so you can access the live chat there and ask questions regarding it to see the next steps if you're going through another round if there is anything people will answer you okay so it will depend on the opening, to be honest. Okay, so I, I've seen a lot of questions that I want to answer, but I will start slowly. <laughs> and I have one that is asking, where, when can I redo an assessment after failing once? One year, six months? So first of all, there is no failing in our online exams. And that is why we don't actually give out grades, because as I said before, it's all about fit. And we have profiles that in a, the test might need a certain score. And then we have other openings that require a different threshold. So there is no actual proving or failing the exams, right? But there is the possibility of retaking because our skills can improve in different areas of our lives. So it really depends on the online exam. But as Bea said, Keeping your profile updated on our applicant side is very important. So whenever you jump in and it's time or you have the availability to retake an exam, there, you're going to see a prompt that is going to offer you the possibility of redoing that same test. So if you see that option, just remember Bea's advice, find a quiet place, make sure that you have the, enough time to take that exam quietly and just redo it. Hopefully, maybe you'll get a higher score and you will be able to be a fit for even more openings than you were before. Okay. Um, Mitch, you're doing great on the q and I always <laughs> get nervous during Q&As because, I mean, I see so many questions and I always want to answer them all. So I try to answer a lot of questions at the same time. It's a mess. Oh, guys. it I'm happens sorry. to all of us. <laughs> but uh, I see a question here that it's really interesting regarding the English level, if the interviews are in English and if uh, every position requires English. And um, I mean, yes, every single position here at Bytes that will require a certain level of English because 
as I mentioned, we work with people from all around the world. So Mitch is uh, Argentinian, I'm Brazilian, I don't speak Spanish, she doesn't speak Portuguese. I mean, we try a few uh, words here and there, but I cannot communicate in Spanish. So it's English a disaster. Is what, yeah, <laughs> English is what bonds us here. So it's the official language here at Vitus Dev. But um, one thing that I would like to, to address here is that if your English is not perfect or you're not like C1 level, whatever, don't hesitate, apply. We have positions for all different levels of English here. It depends on the client, on the project, on the team. So, and on the position too. So, uh, if you think your English level is enough to communicate on a daily basis with the team, even though your grammar is not perfect and you make a few mistakes, don't worry. That's completely fine. Uh, most of us are not natives here. We can, we make mistakes all the time here. Uh, and I mean, my English has improved a lot since I joined by this dev. So it's also a great opportunity for this. So apply. Awesome. And we also, I want to add that if you join, even if you aren't sure of your English level, we offer English classes to all our endeavors. So you will have the possibility to improve your knowledge once you join the company. Okay, so I have a question asking, are you actively recruiting junior UX designers? And this is an, uh, I'm going to answer this question in a broader <laughs> spectrum not talking specifically about UX designers, but about juniors in general, right? So when it comes to technical roles to developers and people that will eventually, like, will be hired to work with one of our clients, we are a company that specializes in more of a senior or semi-senior role, okay? It doesn't mean that we never have openings for juniors. Sometimes we do once in a while for a specific project that we might be okay working with some junior profiles. But the focus and what we are mostly known for is hiring more experienced roles for our clients and developers. Now for what we call our backers, our own fidevers that work for virus app and not for our clients. And for those roles, we do hire people who have little to no experience for our different areas. We have an area, which is our research and development team that has a lot of different teams that work for our own proprietary software and processes. So for those roles, we are sometimes hiring junior roles and for all our non-technical roles, right? Marketing, HR, talent acquisition, business development, sales. For all those roles, yes, we do hire juniors. Um, it obviously will depend, as we said, on, on fit, both cultural and knowledge, potential, and all those other things. Um, but for those non-technical roles or technical roles for us, we do hire juniors. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Michi, people are also asking if we only hire people that come from an IT background that are uh, software developers. So this is great that you mentioned. We have openings for a lot of different profiles, a lot of different areas here in Bytes Dev. I, uh, before Bytes Dev, I've never worked in uh, in tech before, you know. So uh, it was a great pleasure to come here and learn more about technology. Before by this dev, I only uh, knew, like, the only thing I knew about tech is that Java is that thing that pops up on your uh, computer saying you need to update it. Other than that, I didn't know anything, but I learned a lot. Now I can, I mean, I still uh, cannot code. I'm trying a little, but not that much, but I can differentiate technologies and understand the processes and the workflows inside the tech industry. So don't worry if you don't have a tech background uh, and you feel like you should apply for one of our positions, I encourage you to do the same. Yeah, and just to give you an example, in my case, and I've been here for five years, right? And I'm a manager in employer branding right now because I always like working with people. But in college, I studied veterinary medicine. It has nothing to do with IT techie development. And I was still given a chance because I was a fit culturally and they saw my potential and they decided to give me an opportunity. So don't be held back by your either your background, your experience, or whatever you're studying in college. If you would like to work with us, just apply to a role that feels appealing to you and give it a try. Um, so I have another question regarding what we're talking about is how important is formal education? And this is a great question that I love because 
adverbs have, of course, having a title sometimes it's not that it's necessary, but it does give you some skills, some knowledge on your, your area, but it's not something that we are 100% set on asking for our applicants, right? As I said before, I studied veterinary medicine. <laughs> That's the best example. <laughs> it has nothing to do with any of the roles that we have as a company. And we have a lot of people that either started university and dropped off or never actually went to club joining afterwards. Barisev is a company that's really focused on skills, both hard and soft. So if you have the skills that we're looking for, for someone in that role, we are going to move forward for the hiring process, regardless of your formal education. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, as I mentioned, I don't come from a tech background either. I have a master's in cinema. Uh, Education is not the most important thing here. We care about your soft skills, your uh, also some other technical skills that might be related to the work. Remember, I said, if you never worked with that specific thing before, but you think you've worked with something else that might help you understand the process and the tasks for the role, that's also something we really enjoy here. Um, so, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let me see if I can get another question here. Okay, I have a few while you're looking Ooh, for. Um, I see a question here. I love that our YouTube uh, viewers are asking a lot of questions. Love you guys. Uh, so what type of work contracts do the, does the company offer? Is it a freelance agreement or a payroll contract? So we have different types of contracts depending on the country where the person lives in. Our company is registered as a company in both Argentina and the United States. So our endeavors that live in those countries, me, for example, we're hired directly by the company. For everyone else that lives in other countries throughout the, around the globe, we have what is called a contractor type of contract. But what we offer is the same type of benefits for all of our employees, regardless of whether you are a contractor or a direct employee, which means that our contractors also have two weeks of holidays per year year, they have sick days and maternity and paternity leaves. They have, um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably forgetting a lot of benefits, but they have like uh, holidays, national, their own country holidays to enjoy throughout the year. Um, we have uh, contracts for an indefinite period of time. We don't do a yearly contracts or monthly contract. It's always on forever unless the person decides to leave or by any reason the contract gets terminated, but it's always a indefinite period of time. So they really have access to the same type of benefits as direct employees. I see uh, some people on LinkedIn, Mechi, asking about some specific fields like supply chain, project management. Uh, I would encour encourage uh, you guys to or either use the QR code here or click on the link on the description of this event to check on our jobs portal all of the openings we have. But even if you don't think there's an opening that might fit your profile right now, I also encourage you to go to the applicant site, view your profile, because as soon as an opening comes and it fits your profile, we'll be in touch with you too. So go ahead and check that link. Awesome. And I was at the end of the question asking, and are the roles full time? And yes, we work five days a week, Monday to Friday, nine hours with one hour break in the middle. That is a 40 hour per week um, time. I, I lost the word, the schedule. Um, <laughs> and we offer a lot of flexibility which is also that something that I think is very good about this company. And if someone has I don't know, a bank appointment, a doctor's appointment, if someone has um, therapy in the middle of the day, it's always a possibility to talk with our managers, arrange our schedule around those other responsibilities to be able to maintain a work-life balance that fits our lifestyle. So yes, we do have to work our 10 hours a day, um, but we have a lot of flexibility when it comes to organizing that schedule with our manager to decide what's the best time for us. Yeah. Um, 
and also uh, one thing, since we all have this schedule, it's uh, and we'll be working in different time zones and everything. One thing that might that uh, we mentioned during this webinar, you can work from anywhere you want, but uh, if it's in a different time zone and that might affect uh, like meetings with clients, meetings with your team and everything, it's always good to align this with your manager. But other than that, it's, I mean, I've seen people doing this a lot here. Uh, so you can, you can go ahead and travel and uh, work in different uh, time zones, or uh, we, as Mitch mentioned, we work in an eight-hour day schedule here, but it's kind of flexible, so you can start early or a little later, and you know, uh, adapt this to your needs. Great. I have a question here on YouTube asking, saying, I have asked during multiple interviews about the salary, the benefits, the company's culture, and no one seemed to be able to have a response for this. Salary is important from the first interview. And there is a reason why there is no disclosure of the salary at the beginning, and it's because it's not a fixed number for the role. It's a salary that's off, like, the compensation package is personalized, right, to each of our applicants. It's a combination of your expectations, the country that you live at, because of course all countries have a different life cost. Um, it also depends on the results of both your online exams and your interview process, of the need for that specific role. It really is a multifactorial, I don't even know if that's the right word in English, but um, it has a lot of different things that could affect the salary value. So that is why we cannot say a definite one single number for that role. It would be a threshold, a range of salaries. So we would rather disclose that further on. However, in our hiring process and the way that it works is once you have your first your online exams, self-driven process and your first interview, then you receive an economic offer before moving forward with the final interviews for that specific role. So you would already know what the salary and the benefits are going to be for the role before ag agreeing to move forward with the rest of the hiring process. So it's somewhere in the middle. You don't have to wait until you have that role confirmed to know your salary. Yeah. Um, I, I see some people here asking something about the tests. Um, what happens when you apply for an administrative position and the portal shows uh, coding tests and that kind of thing, technology tests. Uh, what I would recommend you to do actually is to go to our, uh, to our live chat on the applicant side. And if you have experienced any issues with the test, not only this, but like uh, it crashed, I couldn't complete the test, I, I don't know anything contact our applicant support and they will come up with a solution for that because maybe you will have applied for a position that has a specific requirement that you don't need to code but you would need to understand a little bit of it because you're managing a team of developers or uh, i mean they would uh, explain to you the need and if it's something that is really not mandatory uh they will excuse you from that task so don't worry about it okay I have another question here that asks, how do you control the amount of hours an employee work a given day? It's a great question because we work remotely and sometimes when we are so used to working in an office, it feels weird to have no one behind our backs, right? Checking how many hours we're working. And it really depends on the area. A lot of different teams use a lot of different ways of measuring that. There are the Teams, for example, our developers use a time tracker where they register how many hours they spent on each of the tasks that they have to do. Some other teams have a desk time app that checks the activity on the computer. We, everyone, we all have our own hardware given up by us, uh, for us by the company. Um, so we have our laptops that belong to the company with our keywords and headsets and everything else. So we have a somewhat of a system there. But also there are a lot of other roles in the company that work by objectives. And we work in an agile environment with Jira tickets. And that is a way of knowing how much we're working and how we're moving forward because we have to leave comments and close tickets and make sure that we're the delivering everything by the due date. So it really depends on the team that you'll be working on. but we do have our way of knowing how many hours each of us is working based on the results that we have. 
Let me see. I got some other questions here uh, from LinkedIn, and they're all about the status of the application and the feedback and how to know if you're moving forward or not. Again, the best place to do that is through the applicant side, checking the status of each individual application there. Uh, but if you're like unsure of what that means, of what's written there, if it says, oh my gosh, it's open, yeah, we're waiting for the next step, but they haven't contacted me in a, in a few weeks, go to our live chat and they'll explain to you what's happening if there's multiple positions or maybe they're considering you for different clients, different teams, or maybe that position uh, has closed, but they're considering you for another position and evaluating your profile for other positions there. As Mitch mentioned, uh, our hiring process is kind of a never ending process here because we really want to make sure that everyone gets a chance, even if it's not uh, for that specific position. Uh, so I would encourage you to send a message to our live chat support. Yes, and talking about that, I saw a question before also asking about accidentally filling some tests that they were not supposed to and most likely failed. <laughs> so if that is also your case, uh, there is no way of undoing them. You can go through a live chat and let them know. But also I wanted to add that if you ever take a test that it's not really your profile, <laughs> um, then you don't really have to worry because we don't take a look at the exams as a whole. It's not like we take a look at everything you did and make create an average number and use that as a magic number. We take a look at each of those exams individually. So if, for example, you fill out a, I don't know, React <laughs> exam and you're not a developer and you have no idea, or you open the test, you realize you have no idea how to code and you close that, yeah, it will be a low score, but it will only affect the openings that are looking for someone that knows how to code with React. So it will really affect your application to other roles. So you can go to the live chat, but also you don't have to worry too much. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we have much time, maybe for another um, question. Let me try to dig another one Yeah, here. I'm trying to see if we have anyone that we haven't answered. I know a lot of them are, are have been answered before. So if you guys are asking a question and you maybe jumped in a little bit late and you're not sure if we already answered this, we're gonna have the recording online for you to take a look at it again. So you don't have to worry about that. And also remember that even if maybe we haven't had time or we missed your answer to your question today, Bea said it a hundred times, I'm gonna say it again, you have the live chat <laughs> and you can have support from some of, some of our endeavors to answer all of these questions that you might have. And not only regarding your application process, but also as a whole um, questions about the company and the requirements and everything else. Um, so I think we don't have any more questions. I don't see any new ones here on YouTube. I don't know about you, Bea, on LinkedIn. Yeah, I don't find any new questions here, but I would like to ask something, not to you, Mitch, but to everyone who's watching us here. Uh, guys, please access the link that you see on the screen, the QR code or the link on the description of the event and answer our survey. Again, I mentioned this before the Q&A session started, but it's really important for us to uh, hear your thoughts and understand what can we improve regarding these webinars and what kind of things you'd like to see on the next editions. So it would be a pleasure to uh, read those answers there before, uh, after, okay? Yes, um, please. Yeah. Please, please, please answer <laughs> our survey. We want to hear some feedback from you guys. Yeah, and either either if it's negative or nice and girls, anything, Let's be yeah. inclusive and everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so please, uh, we also have on the survey a uh, specific question for adding comments and suggestions. So if you think that anything can be improved or any other topics that you would like to see covered in those webinars, please go there and suggest those so we can prepare the next editions for you. Yes, and that being said, I think we're are done for today, but we will be having another webinar next month. So keep in touch, keep a look out on to our social media channels to find out about the topic. And if you have any more questions, we can see you guys um, and girls again next month or get in touch through our live chat, which I know we've said that word so many times today. Uh <laughs> I love the live chat. I would talk about it all the time. Yeah. Here. I mean, I'm kind of an anxious person, so whenever I get the op the option to go there and chat live with someone instead of waiting maybe for an email or something, I, I love that. So I think it's a great resource we have here. 
Oh, I just saw something about Platzi for women. And I would suggest you to take a look at our social media because we did a partnership with Platzi uh, in March and we are gifting, I think, 100 scholarships for girls in Latin America to study something tech related. So yeah. we are doing a lot of things. Um, we'll see you next month. I hope everybody has a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye, -bye. Thank you for, for joining. joining.